We want to talk about a lot of the new updates that have recently rolled out on Facebook. Some of them they've announced, but some of them they haven't announced. But I do think they're going to be important for some people in the community. The first one we want to talk about is the new update for Facebook broadcast channels. We know that this feature rolled out on Instagram some time ago, and it's a great way for people to keep in contact with their community because you can send out a one-to-many message to share a new piece of content, to share an announcement, a video note, or something else that's going to be interesting to your community. And I especially think that this is going to be beneficial for small business owners because a lot of times small businesses, they run advertisements to their community and they tell Facebook to retarget their page followers. But if you can get your most engaged followers and customers inside of your business channel, then it's easier for you to reach out to them when you have specials and offers for your business. But with the Facebook algorithm, a lot of times you see the offer days after it's over. And so I really think broadcast channels are going to be great. And they're now available globally for Facebook pages. And they're coming soon to professional mode creators as well. So everybody is about to have the opportunity to re-engage their followers and for the people in the performance bonus this is also going to be great for you because this is an opportunity for you to create a piece of content share that content with your broadcast channel and then have them share it again in their stories and get even more reach interact with the content and build engagement and help the post traction when you first post that content and I think what we're going to find as time progresses is that broadcast channels more valuable than we even knew in the very beginning because they're very similar to having an email list except that Facebook still controls it. And if you post something inside of the broadcast channel that goes against their community standards, then you can lose your broadcast channel. The channel or the content inside of the channel can be reported. And so it's important that you understand that this is meant to be a public messaging platform for you. And so the messages here will be treated differently than if it was a private message you sent to someone. But they're also going to make it easy for you to cross post your broadcast channels from Instagram to Facebook automatically. So if you share a piece of content on Instagram and you want it shared on, on your Facebook channel as well, you can just set that up with the click of a button and it's done. And this is going to make it so much easier for you to manage your presence on both platforms. Another feature that broadcast channels have that can actually help you give people an incentive to join your broadcast channel is to set it up so that they get 24 hour early access to the content you post on that account. Now, to be completely transparent, most people have paid membership platforms that they'll set this up on so that they can give early access to content for. But if your business has more to offer people, then I still see this as a great incentive for people to join your broadcast channel. And finally, here are some quick best practices that Facebook says. Number one, just write a welcome message so that when people join your broadcast channel, they're immediately greeted. Number two, promote the channel everywhere on your platforms and let people know why they should join. Number three, keep a conversational tone. This is just a place for you to actually get to know your followers and for your followers to get to know you. So this is not necessarily a place to go wide. It's a place to go deep. And then number four, use a variety of formats to engage your audience. We've already talked about this in several videos, especially on Facebook. Try to embrace as many formats as possible to re-engage your audience. And number five, you can connect over shared interests. So if they like the content you're sharing, they can ask different questions and communicate with you and you can get insight into what they like and what they don't like with polls. So channels are going to be a great experience for a lot of people. And although broadcast channels are available globally and are coming to professional mode soon, it's only going to be for creators who have 10,000 or more followers. So make sure you're aiming to hit that 10,000 mark as quickly as possible. But now let's move on to the next section of this update with Facebook. Very quick update because I know that a lot of you are going to be interested in what Helen Ma, the head of Facebook product and monetization has to say, but it's been five days and we've yet to hear them respond with the Facebook Five show. Hopefully we get her Q&A series of answers this week and hopefully they give her the questions that everybody is asking as far as payout support, pay rate and reach and 
just the whole monetization model. Hopefully we get some good information from her. And if you haven't seen my last video where we talk about this, I'll pin that video right here and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date with all of this information. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is a small but seemingly move in the right direction for ads on Reels. So if you open up monetization and then you scroll down to the monetization tools that you're not eligible for and I tap on ads on Reels, you'll see that they now have an I'm interested button at the bottom. That wasn't there before. And so now if I tap on I'm interested, I'm able to actually let them know why I think I should be eligible for this program. And so I'm not going to type anything, but I'm just going to hit submit interest. And just like that, I've submitted my interest for ads on Reels. So I think that's pretty cool that you no longer have to go to a website and let them know that you're interested in ads on Reels, especially if your Reels are always going viral. Another new update to Facebook that I want you guys to pay attention to is when you go to a page, whether mine or yours or anybody's, what I'm starting to see pop up on a lot of profiles and possibly all profiles, I don't know, is you have posts about photos and when you tap on more, you have videos, events, and mentions. So now I've tap on videos, it brings me to my reels. And even if I go to my professional mode account, it does the exact same thing. It brings me to my reels. We actually discussed this a few weeks ago where Facebook was talking about coming out with a new video player where they were going to start taking long form video and placing it inside of a vertical feed. And I think this is part of them implementing what we discussed a few weeks ago where we talked about Facebook implementing a vertical video player where reels and long form video were all in vertical format. So that whether your video was 10 minutes long or 10 seconds long, you couldn't tell the difference. And once again, I think this is their last step actually trying to be like TikTok, because let's be honest, that's what they've been doing from the very beginning. They've been trying to be like TikTok. And let me give you one example of what I'm talking about. If we come to the Facebook for creators page, we can see that they have this video by Kojo Sarfo that they posted yesterday. He's a very large creator on Facebook with over 860,000 followers. But if we come over to TikTok, we can see that he already has an even larger audience, three times the size of his Facebook audience, 2.4 million followers on TikTok. And if you do a very quick scroll through his reels, you'll see that they are largely his TikToks reposted onto Facebook. Because I think it's safe to assume that he creates his content primarily for the platform that has the largest following and then he repurposes it to the smaller platforms i don't think he's creating for facebook and then posting it on tiktok but he does supplement his video content with typical facebook content like memes horizontal videos and also photos so even though i preach that creators should focus on a single platform until they get it, you know, large and established and then start branching out. If you're going to go the two platform route, I think it's best that you choose TikTok and then repurpose your TikTok content to that second platform because TikTok is the creative hub, whether you like it or not. And TikTok is the only reason we've been seeing a lot of the great changes that we have been seeing with Facebook and Instagram as far as anybody getting any reach because it's been paid to play for a very long time. An updated video player is coming to Facebook. When viewers tap on a video anywhere in the app, they will consistently see a vertically oriented full screen video player that recommends the most relevant videos based on their interests, regardless of whether they are reels or not. Reels will also get controls that are available for longer videos like full screen mode to easily flip into horizontal viewing, fast forward and rewind so that viewers can watch however they like. These changes are coming to US and Canada over the next few weeks and to the rest of the world later this year. Learn more about the new player and video experience here. And so I just want to quickly go over this again. You can look at everything else they said. They were very brief and very to the point. But when it comes to this part, what this means for how creators earn from video, you can see that they get very wordy because they're trying to explain away the fact that your pay rate is going to go down. And they said we expect some creators earnings to go up while others will go down. I've yet to see anybody since this new update where all video is vertical to say that, hey, my pay rate has gone up. What I'm mostly seeing is people from in-stream ads primarily say my pay rate has gone down. 
If your pay rate has gone up over the last few weeks, you're in the in-stream ads program, please let us know in the comments. Uh, if your ads on Reels pay rate has gone up, let us know in the comments. Once again, we just were trying to get an even understanding. And I also remember how we discussed about you should join ads on Facebook Reels. And we thought that this might be a right move in the direction of finally bringing up an eligibility status so that people could earn join the program. But I think they want to make sure that the only people that are in the program are the people who are bringing in the most views to the platform so they don't have to pay everybody because then it just wouldn't make business sense for them. They wouldn't be as profitable. They couldn't fund their other projects and the stock would probably tank. And this, I believe, goes back to the fact that we're now able to express interest inside the app for the Ads on Reels program. And I do believe that both programs have finally completed their transition to a performance-based pay model. And I do believe that this, to some degree, has placed both programs on the same pay rate or same footing. Because it seems as though in-stream ads are getting paid at the same rate as ads on Reels. But let me know in the comments what your experiences have been as far as in-stream ads and ads on Reels and whether you've actually seen a pay increase if you're interested interested in signing up for ads on reels and also let me know if you're excited about the broadcast channels myself personally i believe that every creator deserves to be paid what they're worth but i also believe that you should take responsibility for receiving that payment and that you should offer your audience more than the content that you post for free if you want to create another stream of income from your audience, then I want you to watch this next video where I'm going to show you how to create one of the most popular digital products that everybody's creating right now to immediately develop a second stream of income from their audience. And the good part about it is the AI tool that I'm going to show you does all of the work for you so that you don't have to worry about all of the complexities that go into actually making a good digital product that people want to buy. But if you got value out of this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, take care. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video, hopefully when we get some questions from Helen Ma about Facebook monetization.